what's up? This is Jake with Hike734, and it's a time of year that I start getting a lot of emails about trip planning. And so this blog is about planning three-day backpacking trips. So um, if you're interested, keep watching. I'm going to move kind of fast so we can cover a lot of ground. Um, I do want to mention one thing is, I'll say transportation. There's the transportation, the free shuttle that goes up and over Logan Pass, which there's a limited time. And then there's also a fee-based shuttle on the east side that runs from Waterton Lakes National Park, um, from actually from Waterton all the way down to East Glacier. It's $10 per stop along the way. So it's $10 from Waterton um, to the border and then from the border, um, which is called Chief Mountain, down to Mini Glacier and then to um, St. Mary and then Cup Bank and then to Medicine and then finally... Um, um, East Glacier. So those both are options. So I'll kind of roughly refer to them, but for the most part, um, you know, we just need to go ahead and um, get rolling and talking about trips. So um, I'm going to first start out over here. Um, we're going to do it a little bit different than I have before talking about this. Um, we're going to go and zoom in to Jackson Glacier Overlook for our first um, couple trips, and that is going to be up and over Gunsight Pass. Um, there's really two options to make this a three day trip that I can see. Um, the first one is is hiking in six miles into Gunsight Lake and then hiking seven and a half up and over um, Gunsight Pass and Lincoln Pass to Sperry um, Campground and then from there hiking six miles out. The, um, you're probably going to get to the Sperry Campground with not a whole lot um, of energy left um, but except for you might be able to climb Lincoln Peak which is really great. Um, if you want to go up to Sperry Glacier and all that, you might want to do second option, which is hike all the way up and over to Lake Ellen Wilson, which is an 11 mile day. So that first day is kind of a bugger. And then the second day you go to Sperry Campground. And then um, then when you set up camp, you can go and hike up to Sperry Glacier and stuff, which is awesome. And then hike six miles out. All right. So the next one we're going to go ahead and talk about. I have two that are the high line. I'll talk about one right now and then another one later. And um, this first one on the Highline Trail, you hike the approximate eight miles along the Highline Trail to the very um, often fully booked Granite Park um, campground. And so you'll want to book that one early. And then the next day, you'll wake up and go up and over Swift Current Pass down to Mini Glacier. And then the th and you can stay at these campgrounds. They have backcountry campsites that are like the $5 per person per night that are for people that are traveling through there. So you can't start or stop there. And anyway, but the next day you'll wake up and you'll hike up and over Pegan Pass, um, over to Logan Pass, or over to going to the Sun Road. Um, it's a lot of work going back up and over there, but and you can do this do this trip one way or the other, but definitely it'll be a little bit of work for you. Um, that last day is actually 12 and a half miles. I've done it, so I don't know if you can, but it's, it's definitely doable, I'll tell you that much. Um, so while we're in the Mini Glacier area, we're going to talk um, about using Poya Lake quite a bit. Um, if you hike um, to Poya Lake the first day, that's six and a half miles, and then the second day go up and over Red Gap Pass down to Elizabeth Lake. And these are, I mean, that from Poya Lake to Elizabeth Lake is ridiculous. It's so beautiful. I um, mean, that's about 10 miles. Um, if you want to, um, because like the foot of Elizabeth Lake is booked, you can go and hike to the head of Elizabeth Lake, and that'll only add like a mile or a mile and a half to your trip. And then the next day you'll go ahead and go up and over um, tar through Tarmigan Tunnel back to Mini Glacier, and that's um, ten and a half miles. Um, the one thing I will say about this trip is um, just have a backup plan if that's what your itinerary is, because oftentimes that Tarmigan Creek, um, this drainage in here, gets really um, it, it can be closed due to bear activity. And then if it's early season, Tarmigan Tunnel's not open, so you're thinking like mid July on um, for this trip, really. Um, so if it is early though and you want to do a backpacking trip, you can go to Poya Lake first and then from from Poya Lake you can hike to Elizabeth Lake because usually Red Gap Pass opens up pretty early. And then from there, then you can go ahead and hike um, all the way out to Chief Mountain which is nine miles. Um, so that, that's, a really, um, that, that's a really great way to do it. Um, if you want to make your second day a little bit bigger and go either to Cosley Lake or to um, Gable Creek, which is about 13 and a half miles, you can wake up the next morning and hike up to Bear Mountain Point, which is a site of an old lookout. Super awesome. Um, and then, then you go ahead and hike a short five and a half miles out there. 
Um, so then the next one, let's go ahead and move a little bit more just staying in the Belly River. Um, if you hike in day one to Elizabeth Lake, you're looking at about nine miles. Then the next day hiking to Cosley Lake, which is about four miles, um, and then that'll allow you to go up to Bear Mountain Point. If you want to hike further up into that drainage, you absolutely can, um, and that'll give you a longer day out. Um, but you probably won't be, have time to climb Bear Mountain, um, Bear Mountain Point. Um, but any lake campground in the Mokawanis drainage is super awesome, so I totally encourage that. If Elizabeth Lake, depending upon how much that's booked up, because it does get booked up quite a bit, um, is to do the exact opposite. You can go and go into the, the Cosley Lake drainage, or the Cosley Lake, Glens Lake, and then go to, to Elizabeth Lake. Um, and then another one that was... Um, uh, let's see, it was mentioned to me online, which is a great recommendation um, by Leah, is to hike all the way into Cosley Lake the first day, then the second day hike up and over Stony Indian Pass, and then go over to Goat Haunt. And then remember, you're going to need a little bit of cash to get the boat ride, and then $10 per person to get back to the border. But that's a nice loop, and it's not a very expensive um, shuttle system there. Um, another option on that, if Stony Indian is booked, you can go ahead and hike a little bit further the first day into like Head of Glens Lake, and then hike up and over and camp at the Kootenai Lakes area. The one thing about the Kootenai Lakes area is in the springtime, it's really buggy because um, it's great moose habitat. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then just kind of a last one that's a little bit of a, I don't know, insider kind of a thing. And some people will probably be mad that I'm talking about this one. But Lee Ridge is beautiful. And um, it says that it's not very well maintained, but it's fine. Um, I would take Lee Ridge. Um, it's about a quarter mile before the border. There's a turn off there and you park there and then you start hiking. And you basically hike up and over down to Slide Lake the first day, about eight miles. And then you go back up and over and then spend the night over at Cosley, which is another eight miles. And then you go ahead and, and hike on back out, which is eight and a half miles back to Chief Mountain. And then um, let's talk a little bit more about the High Line Trail. Um, you can do the whole High Line in three days, um, which is a, just a really fun straight through. And you'll have to kind of look at it and figure out how your logistics are going to work with shuttles and all that kind of stuff. But it's actually not as difficult as it seems. Um, but anyways, you start up at Logan Pass, like we talked about before, and go all the way over to Granite Park Chalet. And then that one will be a, a little bit less than eight miles. Then the second day, hiking along the High Line is just still just as beautiful as the other High Line. It's just less crowded, a lot less crowded. And then you'll get to 50 Mountain, and 50 Mountain is just a wonderful, wonderful campsite. One of my favorite in the park. Um, you're right sleeping up against the cliffs. You're looking out at mountains. It's super, super great. Um, but that's about a 12-mile second day. And then the third day is a lot, a lot of downhill as you drop down into the Waterton Valley. Um, and that is 10 miles to get out to Goat Haunt, and then you'll go ahead and take the shuttle all the way around. Another one that's one of the only out and backs that I'm going to talk about, because you can turn a lot of these into out and backs, um, but is to drive up to Waterton, take the boat down and to Goat Haunt, and then hike um, six miles to Lake Francis. Um, there's a couple of other campgrounds you can do that aren't as good as Lake Francis. Um, I would do Janet, and then if you have to, Hawksbill. Um, but the main, the cr crown jewel of this trip is going up to Hole in the Wall, and that's only four miles from Lake Francis, and you just get to hang out there, and then the last day you just hike all the way out, and that's 10 miles. Um, and then kind of while we're hanging out up here in the old um, North Fork, um, briefly, I'm just going to say, if you do a lot of the North Fork stuff, logistics are hard. Um, out and backs don't really make a lot of sense for three days, so you really need to kind of do a through hike, so probably a key swap. Um, if you can pull that off with Goat Haunt, here's how I would recommend to do it. Um, go hike up to Upper Kintla, if you start at Kintla, and then do either Boulder or Hole in the Wall, and then hike out to Goat Haunt. Um, if you do Bowman, you'll um, start at Bo the, head of Bo or the foot of Bowman Lake, hike up to the head the first day, then you'll hike up to Hole in the Wall the second day, and then you'll go ahead and hike it out. Um, other than that, it's really difficult to kind of do an out and back on that one. Um, and then there's just kind of an honorable mention up here. Um, a Quartz Lake Loop um, was referred to me by Kyle, and I, I laughed about that one because it's not really my favorite hike. Um, in the springtime, it's pretty buggy, but it does get open a little bit earlier. But for that one, you hike starting at the foot of Bowman Lake up and over Cerulean Ridge to Quartz Lake the first day, lower Quartz the second day, and then back over Quartz Ridge um, to back to your car. So now we're going to go ahead and take the really long trip um, all the way down to the south um, east corner in Two Medicine, which is just a super great area that I just, I absolutely love um, this, this, this section. And so um, the first one we're going to go ahead and talk about in Two Medicine um, is we're going to go ahead and do 
um, the Dawson Pitam the Dawson Pitamakan loop in slow motion. Um, normally that that's like a 19 mile loop, and it's one really big amazing day. And normally, and, and so we're gonna go ahead and do it the way that I would recommend, and that is the first day hike up to Old Man Lake, camp there. Then the next day is the really amazing. You go up over Pitamakan Pass, and then Dawson Pass, and then camp at No Name Lake, and then back out. Um, that's the first one. The second one moves around a little bit more, and that is you start um, over at the Old Man Lake Trailhead, but you hike up to No Name Lake, and then from and that's four and a half miles. And then from four, um, from No Name Lake, you hike o, um, up along this route, and then you drop down into Morning Star Lake, and then the last day you go ahead and hike out to Cup Bank, and then you'll need to take the shuttle there. Um, if you want to make it a little bit of a shorter first day, uh, you hike um, to Old Man Lake. And then you go to Morning Star Lake, and then you go ahead and head out of the Cup Bank Trailhead. Um, both of those trips were, would be uh, just awesome trips to do. Um, if you want to make a really, really long trip out of this, um, of your three days, is you start here at Old Man Lake, but you walk past Old Man Lake and go all the way to Morning Star, and that's about 11 miles. From there, that's going to stage us to do a lot of traveling the next day, which means drop down to Cupping Valley, go all the way up and over Triple Divide Pass, and head on down to Red Eagle Lake, and that's a 13 and a half mile day, so that's going to be a grunter for you. And then at the very end, you head on out to the Ranger Station, which is eight and a half miles. Um, or you could alter alternatively go out over by St. Mary Falls, and I didn't calculate how far that is, but it'll be probably a little bit longer. Um, and then finally, the other one is actually starting in the Cup Bank area, and the first day do a really short hike to Atlantic Creek, um, and then I would set up camp and then hike to Medicine Grizzly Lake, and then then you the next day you hike all the way up and um, over to Red Eagle, and then out. Um, by St. Mary. So anyways, that's a really, as fast as I could, overview of this. Um, email me more. Let me know in the comments uh, what other ones you think. Anyways, I'm Jake with Hike734, and this is 3-Day Backpacking Trips in Glacier National Park.